Have you ever wondered why the Bible is so long? Well, that's because if it was all just a bunch of thou shalt not statements, it would be missing so much of its beauty. And that's what we want to talk about in today's video. We're going to finish the steps of the bids process, except for one. Now, if you don't know what the big idea Bible study or bibs process is, then go back and watch the first 17 videos in this series. This is lesson number 18 out of 20. Hello church and thank you for tuning back in. I've loved the ones who've been told me who who have told me that you you've been watching and and so now I just hope that you can study the scriptures on your own just a little bit better. Now, if this is your first video, my name is Ryan Wrench, pastor of Calvary Baptist Church in Temecula, California. And we've been recording these videos to try and help our church grow in knowing Jesus. So stay tuned to the end of this one to see how we're trying to, to grow in the Lord every single week. Now with that, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Hello and welcome back. This is class number 18. We have this lesson and the next lesson on application and then the final lesson on a few more examples of what application looks like in Bible study. And then that's it for the series. We've covered so much in our Bible study series and I've loved the process. I've really enjoyed going through this and, uh, and, and appreciate talking with anybody about Bible study. And so I hope it's been a help to you. We've covered a lot of ground from starting at what the scriptures are and, and believing the scriptures can change our lives and then even preparing ourselves for Bible study and where we fit into the big picture and then starting real broad with observation, moving down into interpretation, finding the individual words and what each text means and then learning to read and reread and flag words and then try to summarize it in a word and then expand it to a phrase and maybe get to a sentence of what a text is about. And today I want to go even a step further into, we've already found the, um, the trunk of the tree. If we're looking for a big idea, if we're trying to go into Bible study and just answer the question if somebody says, well, what did you learn in your Bible reading today? Then you'll be able to say, I learned about the love of God, that we should love the Lord. If that's the general sentence of what you say or whatever your structure is, whatever the trunk of the tree is, then, then that's, the, that's the core of it. But then we want to look at the bigger picture at the whole tree. And so that's where this next lesson comes in where we're going to be talking about the branches of the tree. If a tree was just the trunk, uh, that would be a pretty boring tree. You know, some trees are just, just stick straight. Maybe a pine tree is just usually just a trunk with the branches that are coming off of that. But without those branches, it would just be, it would just be a telephone pole. You know, it would just be uh, one straight stick like a, like a fence post sticking out of the ground. And that wouldn't be very beautiful. We love a tree because of all the branches and all the leaves and the beauty uh, that is there. And so when we're talking about that with Bible study, then the trunk of the tree is kind of like, what is God talking about? That's, that's the core. But then the branches are like, what is God saying about what he's talking about? What are the things that add to what he's talking about? And so without all of those details, without all those flourishes, then we'd have a really kind of dry, boring book if it was all just the straightforward points there um, and, and, and didn't fill in with a bunch of stories or with a bunch of poetry or with figurative, beautiful language. Without all the rich details that go into Bible study, then it would be, in my opinion, just kind of a boring book. I mean, it, it's fine to have some straightforward details, right? The Ten Commandments are like that. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. So those are very straightforward. They, are, are, they don't leave very much room for uh, misunderstanding. I mean, it's just, it's just right there. But man, if the whole Bible was just thou shalt, thou shalt, thou shalt, 
Um, you know, we'd read Psalm 23 and it'd be like, thou shalt trust in God who cares for you. And, and that might be basically what the psalm is about, but we would miss all the details of the text. We'd miss all the, uh, the beauty of the text. Do you know Psalm 23? It, it's, it's just this beautiful uh, poetic language and it just flows off the tongue if you've memorized it or if you read it. It brings so much comfort, not just because it's telling you trust in God, but because of all the details that are there. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, if we had just boiled that down to say something like, well, the Lord will care for you. Um, maybe that's true. Maybe that's the idea of the text, but without all the branches that are added to that tree, without all the beautiful flourishments of what Psalm 23 is, then I think we would, we would be missing out on something. There's, there's imagery of pastures and, and lying down and the shepherds guiding you and, and beautiful meadows and maybe some storms, but protection in those storms, and, and feasts, and rest, and all of these things are packed into just those few verses. And so that's a beautiful thing, and I love that. So basically, every text in the scripture is going to have a core idea. It's going to have a, 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 a root thought to it, and then that thought is going to have a lot of supporting ideas to it as well. And so we're trying to figure out how to, how to fit all those supporting ideas together. The, the trunk is the general idea. The branches are the specific ideas. What is this text talking about? Well, that's the core idea. And what's it saying about what it's talking about? What are the details that support that? Well, those are the branches. So in order to find those branches, branches in order to keep it as a cohesive unit, as one big tree, um, then, then one of the processes I've found that's been helpful is to turn that tree, turn that subject, turn that uh, sentence you made in previous steps into a question and then answer the question. And we'll talk about that throughout the rest of this lesson. So step number seven here, we've looked at steps one through six, read, reread, flag words, boil down to a word. So you have your trunk starting to take shape here in your text. You um, boil it down to a word, expand it to a phrase, and then summarize it in a sentence. And that's steps one through six. But we're going to look at step number seven. Um, is to rephrase it into a question. Now, to know what question to rephrase your sentence into, the sentence you found in step number six, well, you just, first of all, have to figure out what question word. As you read the text and reread the text and you're figuring things out about it, then is this a, is this a who text, right? Is, is it asking, well, in our example of Psalm 117, um, is it who should praise the Lord? If we were talking about praising the Lord, then, um, then is it a text talking about the different people that should praise the Lord? So you, you look at the scriptures and say, is this a who? Is this about Christians? Is this about non-Christians? Is this about uh, Old Testament believers? Is this about pastors? Is this about demons? You know, who is this text talking about? And if the text is a who text, then you use the word who to turn your sentence into a question. If it's a what text, maybe it's a text that's giving you a whole lot of details. What 
does praising look like? What does a praising person do? Then, then you look at the scriptures. If it's a what text, and there'll be a lot of answers to the what question in there. Um, maybe the text you're reading is a when. When does a person praise the Lord? When should we praise the Lord? Or it might be a, a, a text that's about particular timing. When will uh, the second coming uh, happen? When did um, uh, God tell Noah would be the end of the flood? When did Abraham uh, receive the promise? When did he expect? You, you know, there, there could be when questions within the text. And so the text you're reading might be uh, a when, if it's talking about times and instances there, or a time-sensitive type of thing, or, or a history um, when did God say this to them previously? And it might be calling them to remember their history. So it might be a when text, um, and it might be related to the circumstances related to our time span, our time frame. So, um, so don't just jump to a, um, a, a who or a what, but maybe it's a when text. It could be also a where. Where is this true? Where uh, does a person praise the Lord? Where should we go when, you know, there might be a where if it's tied to a location and not necessarily a time. So is the text you're reading um, a, a, a where, a location question? Uh, another another um, question word would be why. This text you're reading might answer some questions. It, it might bring up the question why and then Fulfill the why with some answers. And so your text might be, uh, why should we praise the Lord? Um, why should we endure suffering? And it might tell you the reasons for those things. Uh, it, it could be a, a number of those uh, types of questions and different kinds of answers might come from that. But primarily, what is this text asking? What question word is it using? And then, and then is, it a, is it a how text? Um, is it teaching you how to do something or how often you should do something or, or, or how to praise the Lord? If we keep going back to the praising example, then maybe it's a how text and you're going to figure out how to do these things, whatever that thing might be. And so if you figure out what question word to use, then if we're going back to step number uh, six, we summarized it in a sentence. Then step number seven is rephrase it into a question. So we first pick, is it a who, what, when, where, why, how, how often question word that we use? And we just turn that, that sentence from step number six into a question. So if step six was something like, well, we should praise the Lord. And we kind of worked through that a little bit in Psalm 117. Um, then we're going to look at step number seven. If we turn it into a question, uh, maybe it's, why should we praise the Lord? Why should we praise the Lord? I would say from Psalm 117 that we studied earlier that it would be a, a why text. It would be, why should we praise the Lord? And then if you're asking that question, then you go, well, why should we praise the Lord? Um, you're not coming up from your own imagination, the answers. You go to the text again. You go to the scriptures and say, okay, what does this text that we read, if it's Psalm 117, then, then if the trunk of the message was we should praise the Lord, and we're saying, well, why should we praise the Lord? Then the branches start to make sense. They start to add to the tree. They start to give you the fuller picture. And so that leads us automatically to step number eight. So if you rephrase it into a question in step seven, then step number eight is pretty simple. Just answer the question or, uh, or, or some of the questions that are raised from that. So the answers to the question then become the branches. And so you go to the text, you find the answers to your questions, and, and, and that's the big idea starting to formulate. Now, you're not going to be able to fit every single little detail into this thing. So again, you don't want to get lost in details, in, in just the emphasis of one word here or there, we still want to see the big picture. What is God trying to tell us in this text? 
And so he might be trying to tell you something through the definition of one word, but don't let that definition sidetrack you from what the main emphasis God is trying to bring in this whole text. Again, we want to keep things in their context. We want to make sure that what we are saying about this one word actually is truly what God is trying to say within this whole text. And so the way you word that, um, step number eight, the answers to those questions, the way you combine that, the way you word that um, might be, you might word it different from me. It's not like we're changing the truth of the text, but we will change the way we word it. We are not all going to word the thing the same. And, and so it's going to be, um, uh, it's going to be different for, for each of us who might say, uh, go back to this text, Psalm 117. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Now, there's going to be several different ways that you can uh, word this. It might be that um, uh, that you're just you're going to phrase it exactly with the words of the scriptures, or you might put it into your own words. Basically, you're trying to find the branches to the tree. And if we said, okay, why should we praise the Lord is step number uh, seven here. Rephrase it into a question. Then step number eight, answering the question, is as simple as just saying, okay, what is the text saying? We should praise the Lord. Why? Verse two, for his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. So it seems like there's two pretty simple answers to that question. Why should we praise the Lord? Because his merciful kindness. It's great toward us. God's, God's mercy, and not just mercy, but kindness. Boy, that's it's great. It's abundant toward us. And if we're flagging those words, again, we're looking up definitions there. And seeing how, how rich this text is, all the details of the text are kind of flowing into um, uh, uh, the, the answers to these questions, to this question that we're finding. And so we're talking about God's mercy, God's kindness, the abundant, overflowing nature of God showing this mercy and kindness to us. And then, um, and then the second answer to the question, the truth of the Lord endureth forever. What a great truth that is, that, that we're still recipients of God's truth and, and that God wants us to know truth and that it endureth forever and he's an eternal God. And there's so much that's in there in just those two verses, in just those two answers to that question. And so still looking Pretty basically, we're not even jumping to the application side of things yet, but we're still looking pretty basically at this. Why, why should we praise the Lord? Well, simply put, because His merciful kindness is great toward us, and His truth endures to all generations. That's wonderful. So if we're looking here at step number nine, if we're just kind of going step by step here, then we've rephrased it into a question, we've answered the question, and now to, um, to stick with the concept of trying to come up with a big idea, then we're kind of combining these, um, these thoughts, trying to get it into one sentence. Again, I'm framing it from the question, if somebody asks you a question, what did you learn in your Bible reading today? Then you can say, man, I, I was just, I was reading something about, man, and I was just challenged to praise the Lord, because I was thinking about God's merciful kindness toward me and God's truth. And, and that just made me want to praise the Lord more. He, he's just so merciful and kind, and He's given us His truth. And, and I just, I love God. I couldn't help but praising Him today. And so it's a, it's a in a some, some ways, it's a simplified version of the text that you read, but it's, uh, it, it's a way to kind of boil the text down to a big idea. When you combine the thoughts into more of a more of a take-home truth, more of a rock that uh, gets thrown to you, it's easier to catch a rock than a handful of sand. And so that that concept that you take with you throughout the day, then you're thinking about just a few simple thoughts 
rather than everything that you read, you go back and study so that you're taking along with you something to meditate on, something you can remember, something you can carry with you. Oh God, you're you're so you're so kind to me. You've been so merciful to me. You showed me such kindness when I didn't deserve it. And boy, you've you just blessed me with so much. Thank you for not giving me what I deserve and for um, giving me what I don't deserve. And and boy, we get to we get to have your truth and and that we can know your truth. This is this is wonderful, God. Praise I praise you today. And you go through your day praising the Lord because of his merciful kindness and his truth. It's a simple concept, but I think it really helps with Bible study when you can boil these things down that then you can take with you and they can stick in your mind and they can get into your soul and, and they can be something that, that, that carries you through the day. You might not have Psalm 23 memorized, for example. You notice that I had to reference. I don't have it down perfectly. I've quoted it in the past, but I kind of have to keep remembering things. But the more that you remember the, uh, or the more you kind of boil it down to simple uh, simpler wording, um, then then it's a little easier to carry with you. It's a little bit uh, uh, more compressed, a little bit more condensed. So if you want to uh, change the wording or if you want to condense the wording a little bit, you know, Psalm 23 might have had something in there about, well, God feeds me and God clothes me and God protects me and, and all of these different ideas from Psalm 23. Maybe you want to simplify those down a little bit and when you're talking about a big idea maybe you look at that and say well instead of feeds and protects and clothes me and all of that but he cares for me maybe that can be the simplified version and i'm just using that as an example of taking all of these ideas and just trying to simplify them down to a thought that you can carry with you throughout the day and so what we've been calling our Bibs process, big idea Bible study process. You read, you reread, you flag the words uh, and, and look up definitions. And then you start with a general word. You, you get more specific into a phrase and you get the trunk of the tree in a sentence. What is this text about? And you can state it basically in a sentence, a, a, a subject and a verb um, uh, in this sentence. And then you're adding to this sentence by, by asking questions of the text. What is this saying about what it's talking about? What's going on in this text? What are the details of this text? And so you rephrase it into a question, and then you answer the question, and you combine all of that as much as you can um, into one big sentence. And, and that's basically it as far as... Uh, the process that, I mean, this is the way I go through my own Bible study, my own preparation for preaching, my own personal devotions. I'm, I'm dwelling on things throughout the day. Just this morning, I, I read a couple chapters from Lamentations, and, and man, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a lament. It's something that puts into words those, um, those times when we almost feel like crying or being sad, and yet it comes down to... Lamentations chapter 3, great is thy faithfulness. And we sing this beautiful hymn, great is thy faithfulness, based on that text. And his mercies are new every morning. And so that's what's been dwelling on my mind today. I don't remember everything from my Bible reading this morning, but I do remember about the faithfulness of God. And that's what I'm trying to meditate on. And remember that great is thy faithfulness. And we have plenty of things in this life that would drag us down, but God is faithful. And so that's a simple way of just taking a truth with you throughout your day. And as you do that, as you uh, lean into Bible study like that, then we're fulfilling uh, James chapter 4. Draw nigh to God, and He'll draw nigh to you. The way we're drawing nigh to God, yes, is through prayer, but I believe it's through Bible study. When we're hearing God's voice, when we're actually reading the words of God and, and, and we're trying to take those with us and meditate on them, you know what? That's just, that's drawing nigh to God. That's getting close to God. And when we do that, when we lean into what we're trying to um, hear from God and hear His voice, 
The Bible just teach us, teaches us that he'll draw nigh to you. You take a step toward him, he'll take a step toward you. And Bible study is not just an academic exercise. It's not just following a system. It's not just following steps one through nine. But we're truly trying to know God through his word. And what a, what a huge opportunity. What an overwhelming blessing from God that he actually wants to spend time with us and wants us to know him. And so I'm so thankful to be able to do that. I'm so thankful to have the scriptures and to be able to open up the scriptures and hear from God, draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. And I've just found that a simplified process just kind of helps with that. It doesn't replace that, but it really helps me to draw nigh to God. And so in the next lesson, we're going to talk completely the entire lesson about, well, we've already learned what God said in his word. How do I take that and apply it to my own life and, and learn how to bridge the world from the ancient Bible text to my life, my actual life? What is God saying in the scriptures? Next, we'll learn what is God saying to me. And so I'm looking forward to the next lesson. We'll see you then. Well, thank you for watching this video from our 20 part series on Bible study. I realize this kind of content or our Baptist perspective might not be for everyone. And I don't want to waste your time, but if you did find it helpful or enjoyable, would you subscribe to our channel? We're releasing videos every Monday at noon Pacific Standard Time. And I just want to help you bring the Bible home. So we'll see you maybe in person this Sunday at our church. That's it for now. God bless you, church. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.